Do you want to learn all about kidney health and what kind of cooking is good for your kidneys? Do you want to know that you can eat food that's both good and good for you? Well, you are in the right place. We are at Cookbooks with Virginia. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have different guests on every week and I'm super excited about my guest this week, Dr. Blake Schusterman, aka The Cooking Doc. And he's got this great new book, uh, Kidney Healthy Cooking. And y'all, it's just really fantastic. I've got an Instagram going on on my Instagram page and you can sign up to win a free copy of the book. You can ask questions to the cooking doc here today. Super excited. Thank you so much, Dr. Blake. Thank you for joining me today. Yay. Hi, Virginia. Hey, hi, everybody. Glad to be here. I, um, so y'all, I have to tell you, so I got this book and I've been reading it and everyone knows Dr. Blake, everyone knows I've been having this like health journey for the past 18 or so months. And your book, has just really resonated both in my head and my heart and my belly. You're, you're hitting all three places. That's amazing. I'm so glad to hear that. And that was the point, exactly that. Well, I think the thing is, is that, you know, um, like I mentioned to you yesterday, I've lost a ton of weight and people have this, this misconception that healthy food doesn't taste good, which makes me, it breaks my heart. It, um, you're absolutely right. And I think one of the, uh, the problems is when healthy food is branded as not tasting good because it's, right. it's, uh, it does not have to be that way. You can have the taste and it be good for you. No, that is, that is indeed, indeed the truth. And it's really all about, so let's see who we got going on here. We've got Corlette is here and Indigo East is here and Jimmy Prophet from the old mill in Tennessee is here and Rick Rogers. Yay. Hey, Rick. I hope you find out some good stuff for you today. Um, and uh, Dr. Blake, my mama is here. She says, mama is here. <laughs> I always How about my mom? Fun. Yeah, no. Um, and, and actually, I have a family member, not my mom, but I do have a family member that I'm going to um, gift a copy of this book to because I just think it's so awesome. Well, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey and, and how... I mean, you know, doctor in med school and all that, right? I get that. But then cooking, like I, you've written a cookbook. How crazy is that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. You know, if you had asked me 10 years ago, this is what I would be doing. I, I wouldn't have believed you, honestly. Right. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, you're right. You, I, I did all the regular training and um, uh, years and years of, of book work and then I got out into the real world and I ended up in Greenville, South Carolina about 11 years ago. Right. And, you know, actually my, my journey towards food and the way food affects the health started on my first day in um, Greenville. Uh, and it's an interesting story. I was at a dialysis center, which mm -hmm. uh, is where people go when they have kidney failure to get this life sustaining treatment for dialysis. Right. right. Um, and I was doing a tour and in the lobby of the dialysis center were a soda machine and a vending machine, snack machine right next to it. And here we were as doctors and healthcare providers trying to teach people um, how to eat good food and how to protect their health with food. And we were setting just a terrible example right, right there in the uh, lobby, setting them right high sugar, high salt food, soda, all these things that were bad for them. Meanwhile, telling them that they need to improve their health through what they eat. So that was kind of the start of it. That's, um, I read that in your, in your introduction. And I think that that is, I mean, first of all, how prescient and smart of you to like see that. Right. And, and it's just these, these like soda machines and unhealthy vending machines are ubiquitous. You know, it's 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 really easy to eat unhealthy food. I mean, the 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 fast food industry, the processed food industry, has made it exceptionally easy to eat high salt, high fat, high sugar, right? Yeah, it, exactly. It, yeah, and I mean, you know, and I can't do anything about that part of it. That part's right. tough to fix, but I I can have a little bit of an impact on what example we were setting in the in the clinic, and then. You know, when I see patients in the office, um, I notice that, and, and most people who've been to a doctor have experienced this, you know, on the way out, the doctor will say, well, you got to lose weight, you got to eat less sugar, and you got to eat less salt. 
bye, see you later. Yeah, it's kind of like, and, yeah. And then that, that doesn't help. It's ineffective. Right. So, you know, I wanted to create something that, that people could take home with them, put in front of them, have good food in there, and uh, just understand how to, how to incorporate these habits into their daily life. I think that is that it's just so great. And I love what you talk about, about retraining your taste buds, right? So y'all, before Dr. Blake came on, we were talking on um, one of the lines that he talks about in his book is that, you know, exercise isn't necessarily for losing weight. Exercise is to feel good. And I have gotten in this complete habit that I have to exercise every day. Otherwise, I feel like the top of my head is going to blow off of my body. Like I, you know, it, it, exercise helps keep me as sane as I can. Although I probably have some friends and family members that are questioning the effectiveness. But I think that that your your point about retraining your taste buds, like yeah, hell, a, a handful of greasy French fries and a hamburger that tastes good. But after a while, it doesn't taste as good. And I love that. Will you talk a little bit about? retraining your taste buds and i love the fact that you put in their years that it can take a little bit of time but we're worth it right yeah so you think about the the diet that you eat and the food that you like and what your taste buds are used to and that's something that's been developed over some people 20 years some people 40 years some people right. 50 years right and so you're not going to go from enjoying those uh salty french fries which which i enjoy, of course, but to, you know, having a salad uh, or something and really thinking that it also tastes good. Um, and there are some really interesting studies about it, uh, especially related to salt. That if you take ah. people and, and you um, who are used to a really high salt diet, and then you kind of wean them off salt over the course of a couple of weeks and or even longer, and then you give them food to kind of salt to taste, and they'll put much less salt on it after they've retrained their taste buds. And I have patients that come to see me that, that have changed their taste buds and they say, well, you know, I went to a, a family barbecue and it was regular, regularly salted food and it just tastes like the ocean. I just didn't, I don't like it anymore. I can appreciate other flavors rather than just high salt flavors. No, I think that's true. I will never forget, like as long as I live, um, one of my first days in culinary school and the chef went up to a pot of soup or something because it was, you know, soups are the, one of the first things we learn. And it was like <laughs> with the salt and the pepper. And I remember being like, wow, you know, and then of course I shifted to cooking like that. Right. Like, so my cooking was very salty for a long time. And then just recently, you know, in the past couple of years, it's like, it's been intentional. My mom needs to be on a low sodium diet. So I cook more low sodium when she's, when I'm with her, you know, I'm 54. I want my BP to be good. I want to be healthy. I want, it's not just about what size pants you're in. I mean, that's like so secondary to me. It's what's, what's inside your pants. Not, you know, what's on the inside is what makes all the difference. Not really the outside. I mean, Thanks. Exactly. And I think that goes to what, you know, the, the point that you made before about the, the exercise too. So, you know, the exercise can help uh, your mind, it can help your internal organs, and it can help your mood, uh, even if it's not uh, leading to weight loss. Uh, I call right. exercise a miracle drug in some ways, because it's, it's better than anything that I can give anybody. No, it's like move your body. And I think, and y'all, okay, so just let me assure you that this is, this book is great. There's beautiful photographs. We've got, look at that. Like who would not want to eat that? I want, I want a bowl of that for lunch. That's the sauteed rainbow shard and apple. So you got a little bit of bitter and a little bit of sweet. And there are tons of photographs. Look at this beautiful upbeat salad. Like, look at that. That that looks like a French bistro. That doesn't look like healthy food. That I mean, you know, quote unquote healthy food. That looks like a French bistro to me. And then we've also got, um, oh, the soup. This is a perfect day for soup. So you love to cook. I, I love to cook. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a stress relief. And uh you know, it's one of those things where the final product is something that you and your family can enjoy. So I, I love it. 
It's so, I find it, um, I, I, we, when we talked in our pre-production, I have met quite a few doctors that like to cook and there's some piece in there I think that's sort of related about the, the process, I'm not sure. Let's touch base and see who all's here because we've got a lot of folks here and I want to see, oh Lordy mercy, we got a ton of folks, Blake. So let me see who, if we got any questions. Okay, um, Cynthia says, good morning. Beverly Calhoun says, I so need this book. That's right. Okay, Beverly, where you can go to cooking.co, dot .co, not dot .com, dot .co and order that book. We've got Dean from North Carolina. We've got Mary Green. We've got Michelle. Um, let's see, Sandra Frank, this book is a must. Hi, Sandra. There you go. Yay. Um, Jimmy Prophet has an uncle on dialysis. That's perfect. Yep. Okay, let's see. Uh, Rick Rogers was shocked the other day at his local hospital to see they've restocked the snack machine with healthier foods. Wow, that's, that's awesome. great news. That's, that's fabulous. So great. Um, okay, and then we've got, uh, Sandra's got another comment, uses lots of herbs and spices to enhance flavor. That is like, that is everything. I mean, I, it, the, the deal is we were talking about processed foods and fast foods. So, you know, Fat, sugar, and salt. You make pretty much anything taste good if you add fat, sugar, and salt. When you take those things away, it can be a little bit more challenging, right? So Sandra's mention of you using herbs and spices to enhance flavor, that's exactly the key to everything. I mean, you know, if you're used to eating food that has a lot of the, uh, the sugar, the fat, and the salt, and then you try to go to a healthy food that's not seasoned with lots of herbs and acid and spices. Basically, it's going to taste terrible. And, and your, your, your foray into healthy eating isn't going to last very long if your food doesn't taste good. So but I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's small modifications a little yes. bit at a time. I mean, I think that some of the things are like, um, I read what you wrote, like some people like tried the salad at McDonald's and didn't like it. Well, no kidding right? McDonald's is not in the salad business. McDonald's is in the fast food, cheeseburger, greasy, greasy burger business. So that may not be the best place to get a salad, but good for McDonald's for having it. But, you know, people need to like, look at this. I love this curried sweet potatoes and chickpeas. So that's got tons of fiber and good and good for you. So, um, so do you, and you look, you get your recipe in, inspiration, like all over. There are tons of flavors here. There's not just, that's a farro bowl. That's well, I mean, you know, we, we had to, I really, when I was thinking about the recipes in the book, I wanted something that um, uh, can, can appeal to a lot of different people. So, you know, there's some chicken, there's some fish, there's some yeah. salad, you know, you never know what somebody's going to need to kind of transition them into healthier food. That's exactly the truth. All right. We have a question from Cynthia. What's your favorite go-to flavor enhancer? Boy, that's a, so I think, you know, as far as I love, lemon if we're talking about kind of just easy thing just lemon just kind of right uh, elevates the flavor of everything um you know as far as spices go i i'm a big paprika fan i love ah. smoking. i'll put that on all kinds of things that's good well the thing about the lemon y'all for those of you that aren't aware of it is that when you're when sometimes your mouth is happy when you've got sour salty bittersweet and savory so that's when your mouth is happy. And that's when your mouth is happy when you're eating something that's super rich and indulgent and fatty. And frankly, that is when your, your mouth is happy when you're eating something super healthy. But when you can, when you can hit on all of those sour, salty, bitter, sweet, and savory points is when your palate is like, oh. so <laughs> lemon, lemon that sour can uh, enhance foods and take a little bit away from the salt, right? So it's a different, oh. different flavor profile, but it, it can accomplish the same thing. A lot of, there's a lot of times that food needs a little bit of acid to make those flavors pop. All right, let's see who else we've got. Oh, and, oh yeah, that's right. Cindy's like, loves her some lemon. Okay, let's see. I teach therapeutic cuisine at Central Carolina and we'll be using your ideas. Yay, Yay. Kelly. Great. Thank that's you. That's so awesome. Well, you know, that's the other thing I think is that um, 
Additionally, um, ginger and garlic, those are also Definitely. good. Um, there are some, um, there are some, um, wait, I've lost where I need to hide that. Uh, uh, okay. There are some medical schools that are starting to do more in the way of food and cooking. Cause you're right. It's not just enough, like see you in six months, lose weight, exercise, bye. I mean, that's just yeah. not going to do it. Well, you know, I, I, a lot of it started at Tulane, Tulane yep. University. Uh, they have a huge program for kind of culinary medicine and teaching doctors to cook. And there's uh, in Greenville, we have a medical school that opened a few years ago. And there's this uh, great program there, a lifestyle medicine program run by, uh, run by uh, an amazing um, uh, researcher, Dr. Trillick. And she, she takes the students to um, the culinary school in Greenville. And, and they, they do a low sodium week. They do something like a gluten-free week. They do all kinds of uh, learning to cook. And it really gives them the background when they go out into the real world for teaching patients. That's so cool and so smart. And, and I do think, because there are some people in there, there may be more doctors than others because it's just the way that y'all's brains work. There are some people that are super scientific, though. And it's like food is fuel. And these are the crazy people that eat like the soy lint and stuff like that. Like it doesn't matter what it is. It's just, it's fuel for this machine. I, and I, I, don't I don't like fuel that tastes good. I mean, I like fuel. Don't get me wrong. We all need fuel, but I, I like this part a lot. Like, you know what I mean? I like, yeah. You yeah know. The, fla the flavor. And, yes. and, and even, even more than that too, to add to what you said, for me, food is, um, you know, it's, it's comforting, it's, it's family, it's, it's tradition. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't want to lose all those things when you're switching to a healthier diet. And so it's important to make the food taste good and still have these traditions and, uh, and family get togethers, at least when we can have family get together. No, that's exactly the truth. And so y'all look at this. We've got a light macaroni and cheese, and this is a roux-based mac and cheese. It's in something crazy. It's just whole grain pasta, a flour, butter. You've got butter in here. You got, you're substituting out a little bit of the butter with EV, extra virgin olive oil. So I understand that like for like heart health too. Yeah. We've got 1% milk, vegetable stock. So you're backing off on some of the milk and subbing out um, some vegetable stock low sodium hot sauce, cheddar cheese. So we've got cheese. I know that cheese can be a yeah. kind of a landmine with salt for some folks. Um, but I love the fact that you're adding vegetables. So it's mac and cheese. So let's put some peas in there too. And yeah, always add something green to it. Uh, that was one, that recipe, uh, people have been asking me forever to come up with a healthier mac and cheese. So I worked pretty hard on that one with the assistance of my 13 year old daughter as my taste tester along the way. So that, she approved. There's no lack of honesty with a 13 year old. Oh, that's right. She is, <laughs> she, she will let me know when something doesn't work right away. Yeah. That is like, that is like, yeah, you can't get much clearer than that. There's no hiding feelings. There's no, and I think that that's it. I know that some of my sort more successful recipe like makeovers have been some of these comfort foods because people want that comfort. But I know that what you're talking about retraining the taste buds. I mean, now sometimes it's like when something is like the quote unquote traditional version or the full fat version, it's, it's almost like it's too rich for me now. Right. It's like too, I mean, don't get me too. I don't, I mean, I'm not a saint by any stretch of the imagination, but you know what I mean? Like what I, I find it, it, it is now habitual and delicious for me to just remove the skin from chicken before I roast it. Now I have to do that before I roast it. Cause once it comes out of the oven and I'm looking at brown crispy chicken skin, my, um, my, my willpower just leaves immediately. But if I take it off beforehand, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it once I've baked it. Well, I, finding ways that work for each individual person is is so important. Um, and and I'm the same way with eating uh, really fatty foods. I can't do it anymore because it feels too rich. Right, right. Or, or, or the other thing, it's like all good things in moderation, right? So you can eat those French fries or you can eat that like fatty thing, but you only want to do it like every now and then. So we've got, I love this, the couscous and the roasted carrots. Did you, is this the one that you made for us today? Yeah, that's, that's the one that I made. We'll see if we can get it on camera. Yeah. So tell little, us a little bit about this. I'll read out the yeah. ingredients. 
So we've got onions so, and carrots and extra virgin olive oil. So uh, tell me a little bit about this dish. So this is, this is one of my favorite dishes in the book. And um, the reason is that it really kind of showcases the way you can create a lot of flavor without uh, a lot of extra fat. So, um, and a lot of extra salt. So we do things like toast the couscous before we cook it, which gives nice. it a deeper flavor and a little bit of browning. Um, we're roasting the vegetables before we put them in there. And then we're topping it with a little bit of sweet cranberry, a little bit of fresh herbs with parsley and uh, a sherry vinaigrette to kind of pull it all together. Nice, sour, salty, bittersweet. There you go. Yeah. And I love that, that point about the uh, toasting the couscous. You know, I, I also think, Dr. Blake, that, that generally, like even at fancy restaurants, it's not it's not like one big thing that a chef does that makes a dish better. It's usually a series of little things, right? It's it's the, yeah, yeah. that little thing that can make a difference. All right, let's see who else we've got. We've got lots of folks here. we got healthier mac and cheese. I need to try that ASAP. Uh, Cheryl is all into this. Um, Kelly likes using dried lime and sumac. So that's a lovely, mm. that's really, really cool um, for, for that acid, for that acid. Sumac. sumac is so good. And it's, I think that that's also cool too, because what happens is that, you know, we're learning these like different ingredients from, you know, from, from different people. So, um, all right, so you've got this and it's a really easy, well, first of all, let me talk about the Instagram giveaway. So for those of you that aren't familiar with it, we've got this feed, but also over on um, my Instagram page and Dr. Blake's Instagram page, you can um, you can double up, right? You can go to his feed and my feed. We're adding another giveaway. So you have two chances to win. And so you're going to go, you can go to virginiawills.com or thecookingdoc.co and you'll find how to get to our Instagram and you can, uh, you're going to like the cooking doc and like me, comment, tag a friend and enter to win. And we're going to have two copies of this great book, Kidney Healthy Cooking. So I think that one of the things that happens with medical cookbooks is that they get so serious so fast. I mean, I, I, I'm a professional and sometimes it makes my eyes glaze over You've done a great job about putting this in layman's terms, I think. Uh, that was that was a goal. Um, I wanted to make it a little bit fun, a little bit easy to understand, uh, because it's really easy to get bogged down in really medical details and things like that. So, so I've really worked hard on trying to make it understandable for people. Well, and I think the other thing, too, is that like Rick just posted that he was diagnosed with kidney disease this week. And it's like, you know, it's so overwhelming. So you've got this like personal reaction, emotional reaction, and then you start trying to read something that's supposed to help you. It's all like over here above your head. And then it just feels super defeating, you know, it, and it feels like I hope it feels hopeless. I don't, I don't know how to put it any other way. I mean, I know it's like, you know, it's like, well, I don't understand this and this is something's wrong with me and I don't know how to fix it or something's wrong with me. And it means I have to lose like 50 pounds or, something's wrong with me and my salt's too high, you know, and it, it just, it feels like a place of defeat. And so it's so important, like what you've done to be realistic with people, like retrain your diet over a couple of years, right? Like, I love that. That's realistic. You can't change much in two weeks. It, right. And, and <laughs> when you get into that point where it feels like you got to change everything at once and you can't understand the book. A lot of people just say, well, forget it. I, I can't, I can't fix this. I'm not going to make any changes. Right. Um, and, and, and y'all so um, Dr. Blake talks about in his book, and I thought this was really a, a fascinating um, sort of Kate live case study. You had two gentlemen that were cousins that were basically diagnosed at the same time. And one took one path and one, unfortunately, because of life situation, took the other path and and the results were gra drastically different one gentleman improved and then and one gentleman did not right. yeah i think that's um a very common thing you know if you if you are able to make the changes to your lifestyle that will improve your health really you can see vastly different outcomes um than if you don't uh, that's not the case for everybody some people do everything right and the kidneys still go the wrong way 
Um, right. But it gives you the best chance if you're able to make these changes. Yes. And, and I think the thing is, like, I know that, um, you know, it's maybe and maybe it's some of your your patients and some of the folks that buy my books and stuff. I mean, I, gratefully, I have like people of all ages, but I think that there is a point, right, that a lot of people, they start hitting mid, mid, mid age, you know, and even in your 40s. Right. It's like which is technically, I guess, what is really middle aged. And you're like, oh, this kind of hurts a little bit or wow, that feels a little different. Shoulders a little bit sore. And, and so we start paying a bit more attention. It's easy to ignore everything when you're in your 20s because we're fine machines, right? I mean, even if you're not in great shape, you're in your 20s, but you get a little age on it and it's like, wow, my body is not the same. And, you know, so this is, I think this is great for all ages, but I would definitely suggest that this is um, a, a, some, something for adults, right? Yes, I think so. You know, the if we could convince people in their 20s to yeah. take care of their self, themselves by uh, changing their diets and their taste buds early on, they'd probably be better off by the time they got to their 40s and 50s. No, but it's, it's a hard true. sell for a lot of young people. It is a hard sell. No, I had some, I, I, a friend, uh, someone said to me just this week, she's in her 80s, she's like, if I had known this was going to happen, I would have taken care of myself earlier. And I was like, well, you're a you're in really great shape for your 80s. Like there are so many people that are in their 80s that are in terrible shape. But that's exactly the case. And I would say that has so much to do with like my changes in my health journey. It's like I want to be active as long as I can. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Look at that. Look at that. I love that. That's a stuffed zucchini boat. Those are fabulous. Those look so good. So with your busy schedule, how often are you able to cook? Well, I, the last year has been tough. I would yeah. say in the last year, really, I, I have had so much else going on. I haven't been cooking as much as I like. But typically, I'll, I'll make dinners, uh, you know, four to five times a week. That's um, so nice. Yeah. No, it's nice. It's nice. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Okay, let's see. So Charlie Mitchell is saying he's um, he's awaiting the findings now. OK, so Charlie. So this is what I would say after reading your book, regardless of what your test says, it's time to make some assessments. You don't have to wait until you have kidney disease to eat right for your kidneys. Right. I mean, that's yeah. kind of your message. Like, don't wait till it's too late. Right. Yeah. Prevention is works amazing, even if you get out that they're OK, but you have risk for kidney disease. The earlier you can make the changes, the better. I think that that is like, you know, and once again, there's like baby steps, like little baby steps. It's not like some radical change. You know, don't don't throw out every grain of salt in your cupboard. Just you know, less, right? Right, right. So, all right, we've got that. Let's see what else is going on here. Yummy recipes. We've got lots of folks that are super excited. All right. So I have um, I have some questions for you. I've started this new um, uh, uh, thing where I ask uh, five questions from all my guests. So are you ready to, are you ready for my, uh, my fast five to end our, end our interview? I'm, I'm ready. Okay, cool. So, um, so s separate from your own cookbook, what is the last cookbook that you read or the last cookbook that you cooked from? Um, I think, I think it was, called Vegetables Unleashed, maybe, by oh, uh, yeah. Um, You know, I just love everything that he does outside of the uh, cookbook with his nonprofit. And, and the book was just beautiful for teaching me how to cook vegetables in different ways. That's so cool. And I think that, um, I mean, it's, I always say this, we were talking earlier, you've lived all over. But one of the benefits that we have of living in the Southeast is we have essentially a, a nine or 10 month growing season. There are fresh vegetables coming out of Greenville, somewhere around Greenville, South Carolina and Atlanta, Georgia, eight, nine, 10 months of the year. Yeah, it's very lucky. I'm very lucky to have that. Yeah. And, and, and so when things are fresh like that, they're going to taste better, you know, so we've got butternut squash and sweet potatoes and, and collard greens and broccoli, all the brassicas that are so good for us. So, um, so that is good. So vegetables unleashed. I'm going to have to make sure to, to give that a look. All right. Yes. So what is your, uh, what is your most indispensable cooking tool or what is your favorite cooking tool? 
it, it may sound kind of boring, but I love a good pair of tongs because uh, I can use them everywhere in a salad bowl, on the grill, in a saute pan, flipping, stirring, turning, whatever. Hey, I, I use those tongs all the time. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I feel like a tong, the, the right kind of tong. So then I have to, then my next question, and this isn't, it doesn't mean to be rude or improper, but so okay. six inch tong or 12 inch tong? Oh boy, let's see. I've never used actually a, a twelve inch tongue. I don't think I have it's a pretty, pair. Of okay, so then it's, uh, I uh, I know that that's uh, I know that that sounds like highly specific, but clearly I think a lot about tongs. <laughs> 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 they're like they're kind of like a. I've got these uh, this one pair. I'll have to I'll send you uh, I'll send you a pair. It, they're like four inches, and they're like practically you can like shove them in your pocket. Like it, it's a it's the kind of thing that like you never know. Um, but the little four inch tongs, and then there's a six inch. The twelve are too long for me. So that was a that was a, a good answer. All right, here we go. We've got um, oh, someone is still harvesting tomatoes in Texas. Kelly, you lucky lady. That's so crazy, man. I did see someone on Facebook this morning in Austin, I think it was. They're already starting to plant for spring, which is kind of crazy. Okay. All right. So you have done an amazing job with your recipes about um, all the flavors and, and you've got tons of information in here about lowering salt and potassium and, and all the things that are good for kidney health. But we talked about flavor. Mm -hmm. So sour salty bitter sweet and umami or savory which is your favorite which is the one that really resonates with your palate i mean that's that's easy salty i'm salty. a salty person. yeah <laughs> the uh, kidney and, doctor and says salty I, I am all salty i mean uh, um, a plate of french fries or a bag of potato chips uh and you know i think that that helped me kind of as i was writing this book because i I am such a salty person with the food that I eat that I need to, to learn how to really spice it up without that salt in order to right. get good flavor and still taste good. Right. No, that's so true. That's so interesting. But that is, I think, key, right? That's why some of your, that's why your recipes taste so good because you're, you've done the work to figure out like, you know, what's going to, what's going to replace that or what's going to not, you know, not replace, but what's going to, take that space right and still, uh and still have really great flavor um all right so who is your what's your favorite cooking show this is such an interesting question i've found that this is interesting for people what's your favorite cooking show or your favorite like celebrity chef mm, you know i i think i would go back to the first uh cooking show that i watched and really got hooked on and um you know, I'd already liked cooking a little bit, but then I started watching Rachel Ray's 30 minute meals probably in the early 2000s. And, um, you know, I don't have any professional chef training, but I really learned so much about cooking with, you know, the ingredients that you have in your pantry, yep. and, um, making delicious meals in a short period of time. So I've been a Rachel Ray fan for a long time. So I, she does an amazing job about uh, normal food for normal people. Right. And, right. and, and yeah. she herself, not really any uh, formal training. Uh, and I think that that is the, the key to her success and the key to um, her, why her books are so good and why her television show has been so good. She's like she's like every person. I mean, totally. I think that's, she's a very yeah. wealthy every person now, but she's like every person. Right. She's just like. <laughs> I need dinner on the table in 30 minutes and I need it to be somewhat good for me and I need it to my kids to like it. Right. Yeah. When I started watching her, she was not all that wealthy. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, no, she's on. Well, I, uh, I, I've heard nice. I have, we have not met or maybe we met once, but I've always, I've always heard um, um, nice things about her. So that's always good. So, all right, now this is a crazy question and I feel like in a way it's, it's a little lame. So I'm, I'm trying to work on replacing it. But, okay. uh, it, it, so forgive me, that was a terrible setup. Um, this is my favorite question to ask. That's what I should have said. That's better. That's so much better. Um, what would your last meal be? Like you've got all this, like zucchini boats or roasted quinoa or couscous and all that. Like, what's, what's your, what's your, where are you going there? It, it, it wouldn't come from the book, I don't think. 
<laughs> it would, you know, I love, um, I, I did a lot of my growing up in Maryland. Uh -huh. And so a, uh, a Maryland style blue crab feast, I think would be my last meal. And, you know, you, it's just live crabs steamed with some, my grandma's home, homemade spice, um, with maybe some, and you know, you, you have to pick through the crabs, you have a beer, you have some beer bread, coleslaw, corn on the table, big table with the family around. And um, I, I think if, if I had to have my last meal, I, I would want it that way. You know, so this is the thing, and this is I think that where I was trying to go with this question, and, and thank you for helping me reframe it. Um, food is so much more than what we feed ourselves, right? It's so much more than like what's going to make our kidneys feel better or what's going to make our waistline smaller. I mean, food is at the at the core of it. At, at, at for for in many instances, it's those memories, right? It's that relationship with people. You know, it's not just a it's not just a, it's not just a bowl of crab. It's all of what you just described, right? It's exactly it's, it's yeah. grandma. And, it's a yeah. sunny Saturday when you were nine. It's, you know, I mean, food, I think, has that ability, like no other sensory experience, like to really like go into our brains. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I, I that's why I love food and um, the ritual associated with it and the get togethers. And, you know, I think that's why when we're looking at healthy food, we we, we need to in incorporate that as people are learning to eat healthier. And so bringing the whole family in right. when you're changing your taste buds and changing your recipes is so important. You, that is exactly the truth. And like in teaching people early on, you know, I mean, I always kind of think about it. Like I have, for example, I've trained myself to like yogurt and I like yogurt now, but I didn't grow up with yogurt. And, you know, and so it's like, but now kids growing up, you know, it's, kids, they automatically go to the, they'll go get a snack and go get a cup of yogurt. So it really is like in, incorporating those um, traditions and those good healthy habits, you know, into it. Well, Dr. Blake, it's been, I could just keep talking to you for, for hours. And I, I just really appreciate so much you being a guest on the show. And thank you for putting Kidney Healthy Cooking out into the world. Um, and y'all, if y'all have any more questions for Dr. Blake, um, reach out to his website, thecookingdoc.co. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. And I, I hope um, everybody got to learn a little bit about, you know, kidney health and healthy cooking. And um, it was great to be here. It's so cool. I tell you also, too, um, y'all, um, make sure to check out his website, follow him on Instagram, follow him on Facebook. I thank you so much. And I have an idea. I want to come over and see you and meet the other doctor that you talked about and then check out that Greenville Culinary School. We're oh, gonna, please do. Yeah, we're going to, that completely like tinged an idea in my head. So, so I'll follow up with you later and I look forward to seeing you when we're a little bit better to travel and we'll, we'll do, we'll, let's cook up, let's cook up something together. I would love that, Virginia. That, that sounds awesome. Fun. Awesome, Dr. Blake. Thank you so much. You have a good afternoon, okay? Okay. Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yay. Wasn't that fun? Oh, my God, y'all. You really, I have to tell you, um, I see cookbooks all the time. And I, um, since I've started cookbooks with Virginia, I get, you know, a lot of cookbooks sent to me. And I still, uh, I want to assure you, that the cookbooks that I have on here are cookbooks that I really like and cookbooks that I want to have on here and cookbooks that I think that have a, a place and a purpose, at least in my world, right? And then hopefully in the world. So I want to thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to head over to Instagram and sign up to win a free copy. Um, this is streaming on Facebook and it's also now on YouTube. So super excited about it. Um, thank you so much for watching and uh, bon appetit, y'all. Ah, where'd my thing go? Got to put my glasses on. There we go. All right. Bon appetit, y'all. Bye now.